Now let me ask you this, are you getting bored with reptiles such as this ball python right here? Now don't get me wrong, absolutely beautiful with just quite amazing colors, however at the end of the day just seems to have the personality of, well, a brick. Now maybe you're looking for something that is just a little bit more fun to interact with, something that's not just going to curl up into a ball and do absolutely nothing for you this whole time, but something that's just a little bit more fun and all in all has, well, a better personality. Now if that's the case for you, then you clicked on the right video, because that's exactly what we're talking about today. The top five most personal reptiles, or reptiles with the best personality. Now these are going to be animals that are going to be fun to mess around with, they're going to be interactive with you, they're going to have some sort of personality. They're not going to be animals that, well, when you pick them up, they just curl into a ball and then do absolutely nothing the whole time. So that's the video today. Stick around, we're gonna be talking about some great animals and subscribe if you're new, right down there. We'd love to have you. And kicking off this list, let's start with one of my personal favorites and that's going to be number five, the chameleon. Now, chameleons are an absolutely amazing species of reptiles to work with and come in quite a variety of different colors and different sizes that all need different husbandry needs to where you can really find a chameleon that works best for your situation. There's a wide range of different species of chameleon, ranging from stuff such as the panther chameleon, Jackson's veiled, uh, the pygmies to mean some common ones. Of course, we got the more rare ones such as the nosy bees and the list goes on. Ranging from the size of just an itty bitty little thing that'll fit on your finger to a chameleon that is, well, somewhere around this big they are incredible but the one key thing that they all have in common is the fact that they are a very personable reptile however personality does not translate of course into nicest or being just a nice reptile in fact you can get some species that are very tolerable of human interaction and a little bit more sociable of course for chameleon standards they're not talking about just reptile standards in general of course then you have stuff like well the veiled chameleon of course, the veiled chameleon is a very personable reptile it will definitely let you know of its personality that personality just might not be kindness. The things I absolutely love about chameleons, including the veiled chameleon itself, is the fact that they tell you about their personality and their mood based on the color changes that they go through. I think that is just absolutely incredible that a chameleon will let you know that it does not want to be held, it does not want interaction with you just by changing the colors that it is. Getting stuff like stress spots is a great example. You get these brilliant green polka dot pattern on stuff like the veiled chameleon. Well, it does look absolutely incredible. Usually means, hey, stop bugging me. I want to be left alone. Just absolutely incredible. And although I wish my Veil Chameleon was just a little bit more nicer to me, I absolutely enjoy the interactive experience I get when working with him every single day. And now speaking of animals where personality doesn't exactly translate into friendliness, let's talk about the animal with the biggest personality over here at DBCB Exotics, and that is going to be number four, the Argus Monitor. I want to start this section out and letting you guys know that an Argus monitor is definitely not for everybody. An animal that is going to reach somewhere around the four to five foot length and have, um, as big of a personality that the Argus monitor does, it's definitely not an animal for everyone and at the end of the day could do some harm if you're not careful. But with that being said, let's talk a little bit about the Argus monitor personality. Now, the Argus monitor is the type of animal that where if it does not want you to mess with it and does not want to see you whatsoever, it will definitely let you know. Clear signs of it being just the huffing and puffing. My god do these animals huff and puff. It is the coolest thing I've ever seen, only rivaling secondary to, of course, the classic Argus Monitor tripod, which at the end of the day, the tripod makes just the personality worth all the effort because there's nothing cooler than seeing a monitor lizard stand up. However, it is just that reluctantness to want to be habitualized that really just drives me to want to work with the Argus monitor so much more. I do believe it'll be just an incredible experience when you end up taming down an Argus monitor and you actually open an enclosure and the monitor comes forward to you, not huffing, not puffing, not curling its tail ready to whip you, but just want to be interactive with you. It's a little bit curious about you. I honestly do believe there will be no better feeling to that. And although it's been, well, about a year or two now, and I haven't got there yet, I do believe I'm making progress, and there's no doubt in my mind that one day we'll get a tame Argus monitor. Like I said, the Argus monitor is definitely not for everybody, so let's move on to a different reptile on this list that has a big personality and quite a small package, and that's going to be number three, the Aki monitor. Ah, the Aki monitor. You are definitely not going to get a lizard with more personality in this two foot little package. These have got to be one of the most curious lizards we own over here at DBCB Exotics. Of course, our pair of red Aki's has been going for about a year, and although we've gotten eggs and it hasn't worked out yet, I do believe we'll get eggs at some point, possibly 2022, maybe. Well, 
Fingers crossed. Pokemoner is definitely have to be one of my favorites over here at DBCB Exotics. And although I don't show them much off in the camera, I definitely do work with a lot of them. There's just something absolutely amazing about going in the enclosure, these two tiny little lizards running up to you, checking you out, tongue flicking, making sure, seeing who you are. Do you have food? Are you just here to handle us? Are you gonna give us some new water? What's going on here? It's just an, it's an awesome experience. I don't even know how to explain it. It's one of those things where, you, you know, I do believe that people think of Accumonitors and they think of them not really like a monitor lizard. You know, they're not a five foot lizard, not a six, seven, eight foot lizard. Man, monitors get big. No, they're a tiny lizard that are even a little bit smaller than say a bearded dragon. So I really wouldn't want one. And I had that same mindset going in until I actually purchased this pair of Ackies and man, I could not have been more wrong. You guys definitely have the curiosity and the personality of a monitor lizard with the pro being they're small. They're not very big, ranging at somewhere around 20 inches, maybe a little larger, maybe a little smaller and can fit inside a minimum size enclosure of four by two by two. This is a monitor lizard that practically anyone can own. They're not an aggressive lizard. They're not gonna come chomping at you, biting at you. And if you do, well, their mouths are this big. I, I mean, what damage is it gonna do to you? All in all, they have to be one of the best monitor lizards to own for the average pet keeper. And if you're not looking for something with a personality, that means getting whipped and getting somewhat of a serious bite out of a four foot lizard like the Argus's we just talked about, I believe the Aki monitors would be a great fit for you. But moving on, we only have a couple more animals to talk about, and this is gonna bring us to a reptile that I just don't understand why it is so underrated, comparatively speaking. That's gonna bring us to number two, the blue tongue skink. I honestly just do not understand why the blue tongue skink is not more popular. This is just an incredible reptile whose rival seems to be, well, the bearded dragon, the, the most common beginner pet. Everyone has a bearded dragon. I, I have two, they're, well, right behind me. And yeah, well, we've got the beardies and they're cool, they're great. They're definitely not as personal as a blue tongue skink. I really do believe this is the most underrated beginner reptile because they're easy to care for, similar properties than a bearded dragon, but actually in my opinion, blue tongue skinks might be a little bit of an easier pet and well have a bigger personality. They're more interactive. They're in my opinion, a more fun animal to work with. Now I could see why in the past these guys might not have been as popular and that has to be from the wild import trade. There's a lot of wild caught blue tongue skinks like, well, my skink right here, my little pet store rescue that they just threw upon me because they could not sell it because he is um, well personable, uh, not, not, not very nice, not, not the nicest animal in my collection. That's not to say in this day and age we don't have captive bred resources and that's not just going with the, well, more expensive Australian or Northern blue tongues, but we have Easterns now. We have just an absolute incredible animal that looks really stunning for the price of around three to $400, which at the end of the day, isn't that much of a price difference from your wild caught import. Those things coming around 175, 200, the extra hundred dollars is really gonna play a big difference in that captive bred role. And it's really gonna make a big difference on what the personality tends to. Are you gonna get something that is like this wild caught, huffy, puffy, boisterous? Boisterous is a good word for the blue tongue skink. Or are you gonna get an animal that is a little bit more friendly, a little more curious about you, and at the end of the day would probably make a better pet. If you've been a fan of the DBCB Exotics channel for any amount of time, you know that, well, I'm a little bit crazy, a little messed up in the head over there. I actually enjoy the more mean reptiles, I guess we can say aggressive if you want to use that word. I find it to be a better experience, a more fun experience than something that just comes up, lays in your hand. That's boring. I like stuff that is a little bit more fun. And this blue tongue sink is absolutely not the difference. That's not how the saying goes. Uh, it's the same. It's, I mean, <laughs> You know, words are tough sometimes. I think that's what we really need to get into. I love the blue tongue sings personality. I like the huffy and puffiness, it being a little psh, psh. And there's, not, there's no cooler experience than seeing the blue tongue defense mechanism, them shooting out that, well, not, not shooting, it, sticking out that giant blue tongue like, ah. it doesn't look as cool when I do it, but when the blue tongue does it, it's absolutely incredible. However, when saying that, I've actually never experienced it very often. I believe maybe once or twice when the blue tongues got into, he's gotten a little bit more friendly. He's not as scared of me where he's gonna do that big defensive mechanism of showing that blue tongue, pretending he's poisonous. At the end of the day, Mr. Blue Tongue, we know you're not poisonous. It's a gimmick. We're on to you. That being said, whether you have an untamed blue tongue skink or a very tame blue tongue skink, they're still going to be quite a personable and exciting pet to interact with. They're very inquisitive, they're a very curious animal, and let's be honest, at the end of the day, you get a little potato looking thing, which arms that are like a T-Rex. 
they try to like climb and it never works and, and they flop and it's just it's just a good experience everyone you need to go get a blue tongue skiing they're absolutely amazing and all right folks here we are the last animal on this list now this is going to be an animal you're going to get the best of both worlds we've talked about animals with big personalities and however that big personality doesn't translate very well into friendliness however this animal is going to be the difference you're going to get a very personal animal that is a very friendly animal at the same time and that of course is going to be number one the tegu lizard well, I guess you're gonna get a nice lizard if you don't have my tegus. God, why are my tegus so mean all the time? Now, I guess I should be a little bit more specific in my wording of tegu lizard. You're really gonna want an Argentine lizard that is captive bred. However, even with the Argentine species, you can even get something like a Florida import, like my big girl Bertha over there, that is a little bit tenacious, but definitely has tamed down a lot more, even in the couple of months that I've had her. And I do believe going into 2022, we'll have another nice tegu lizard. However, the best ones are to get is the Argentine captive breds, or even a CBB. There are various sources you can get this, such as DYN and animals, Jesse's Jungles, uh, Rose City Reptiles, just to name an absolute few. At the end of the day, just don't get a Colombian. Don't get a Golden Tegu. I, I don't know why people keep getting Golden Tegus. They get the Gold Tegus, they go on the Facebook post and they ask, why is my Tegu not nice? Well, it's because you got a Colombian Tegu, not the Argentine. You, you chose the wrong Tegu lizard. <laughs> Lizards are absolutely everywhere, and they're even gonna find their way over to DBCB Exotics 2022. We should have some babies going on. We'll be pairing for the first time. It's very exciting. But that's not here we're talking about. We're here to talk about the Tegu's personality and how absolutely incredible it is. There's really nothing better. There's no better lizard when it comes to personality, size, impressiveness, friendliness, the Tegu lizard has it all. It's no wonder it was my dream reptile for four years. Ever since I first started the reptile hobby till I finally moved to my own house where I didn't have to convince my parents to get me a Tegu. But the fact is now that we have one, we have an absolutely incredible Tegu. Really only positive things to talk about the Tegu. Inquisitive, curious, still friendly. An animal that is able to just lounge around on the couch with you, but still go on adventures with. Of course, over here at DVCB Exotics in the Reptile Building, we have what I like to call the Lizard Arena. If you don't know what that is and you're a little bit confused, it's probably because you didn't see that video right there. But this is a place where I can just open up the enclosure, the animal can come out and explore, can get some exercise, some mental enrichment. I love feeding them and then being able to run around the whole place. And it's an absolutely fun experience. And there's no better lizard to enrich that with than the tegu. Now, I do want to give a quick disclaimer about the tegu. And it's really that the premise and stereotype that I think I'm actually also feeding in the 10 seconds ago I was talking about. That's the fact that these aren't puppy dog tame animals. There is no puppy dog tame lizard. At the end of the day, these things are reptiles. They're not going to be like your classic Labrador or Golden Retriever where they're friendly 100% of the time, all the time. Don't get me wrong, these are very friendly and amazing animals, but they're not like that all the time. And I believe that the customer or the viewer, the reptile keeper should know that going in. You're not gonna have a tegu lizard that is going to be 100% doggy tame, lap lizard, or just sits in your lap the whole time. They're gonna have bad days. You're gonna do stuff that pisses them off, makes them a little bit up upset and they might try to charge, tail whip, bite, run away, get huffy and puffy. Again, it's a reptile at the end of the day. I, I don't know why people think of tegu lizards and they're like, it is puppy dog, not reptile. But with that being said, when it comes to large lizards, you cannot go wrong with the tegu lizard. It's absolutely the best choice if you're looking for something with a great personality, a great temperament, pretty good tameability, habituality. I mean, comparatively speaking, I mean, what, 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 what's more uh, habitualized, the, the Argus monitor or the Tegu? Which one are you gonna have more fun with? I think I can answer that for you. <laughs> Tegu lizards, man, absolutely wonderful. And although still a pretty good size, ranging around four feet, if you have the accommodations for them, you know, that eight by four, the UVB lights, multiple basking lights, a pretty large and varied diet, I believe you're gonna have nothing but a positive experience with the Tegu lizard. And it's definitely gonna be a lot more fun than the ball python we showed at the beginning. <laughs> that can be, that's taken with granted. We, we all understand that. And there you have it, folks, the top five most personal lizards. But now it's your turn. Leave me a comment in the comments Section. Do you agree with this list? Are these the top five most amazing animals with the biggest personality? Or did I miss something? Was there an animal that you're like, Dakota, why didn't you talk about this? Drop a comment down there. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, we mentioned a little bit earlier, but Tegu babies, they might be coming along pretty soon. We actually have babies from a few things that'll be coming in 2022. If that's something that interests you and you might want to be purchasing a baby for me, make sure to check me out over on Facebook, Instagram. We're also on TikTok. 
That doesn't have to do anything. I, I just happen to be on TikTok. Facebook and Instagram is the place you want to go. But maybe follow me on TikTok too. I don't know. And of course, last but certainly not least, we have Patreon. Patreon.com slash DBCBExotics. This is where you get the up-to-date updates on everything that's going on within my breeding business. This includes the plethora of animals I have going on, such as my new Caledonian stuff, my tokes, my cave geckos, my ball pythons. We have a lot of ball pythons. And then of course, the monitor lizards, the tegus. I, I lump tegu with monitor lizards. But we've got Argus action going on, Aki action going on, and tegu action going on in 2022. It's definitely something you don't want to miss. You get the first time look for the public looks and when the breeding products are happening, when we're getting eggs, when those eggs hatch, there's tiers to get first dibs on the babies we produce, and even tiers to get discounts on those babies produced if that's something you're interested in. It's an amazing place to be. It starts as low as $1 a month. If you want to get some more information about that or potentially go and join, you can find it right down there, down in the description. There's a link. And other than that, folks, thank you so much for taking the time of your day to follow me over here at DBCB Exotics. We will see you next time, but until then, goodbye.